Hey everyone, my name is Perry, I'm an electrical engineer, and in this video we're going to be talking about Iron Man's Hulkbuster armor. The precursor to Hulkbuster was the Mark 42 in Iron Man 3. <laughs> Alright, I think we got this, send them off. Probably a little fast, slow it down. Slow it down just a- That's awesome. As an engineer, he should know that a far better design would have been to just send limbs instead of a shoulder or a knee because it doesn't really do you much good to just have like two Iron Man shoulders on you. It doesn't really give you any sort of benefit in a fight really. If you have the palm, that makes a lot more sense or like the glove or whatever you want to call it because then you can actually like shoot blasters from them but just having a knee or a waist or a shoulder, it's kind of pointless. If one of those parts is off alignment, it'll affect the rest of the suit. Meaning if his shoulder, for example, is like slightly tilted or like cracked in some sort of way, the rest of the arm will actually not align properly. Each of those individual pieces will need their own power source, which is likely a micro arc reactor of some kind, with propulsion so that all the components can reach him even over short distances. I still don't see the significance in just that mask. Like, why can't that just be a part of the entire helmet? There doesn't seem to be an engineering advantage to just having that with its own propulsion and power source. <laughs> All right, everybody, stand down. <laughs> As the individual parts come together, they all form parallel circuits with each other, and we know that because when the Hulk tears the armor apart, it's not like if he loses one arm, the whole rest of the suit is obsolete. And the other thing that is really, really a little frustrating is the constant interchanging of the parts will weaken the structural integrity because there's nothing screwed in or soldered together. All you have is metal contact so that you can transfer information and power between the components. I'm not sure if Tony is juicing the armor with his arc reactor to make himself move faster because, frankly, it's, it's really heavy. And each time he moves an arm or a leg, it's going to take more electrical energy than the traditional Iron Man suit. And the reason that I question it is because the Hulk himself, Bruce Banner, uses the armor and he doesn't have any arc reactors on him. So that would lead me to believe that Bruce can't use it to its full potential, or at the very least, he's limited when it comes to power output. After re-watching this a few times, those look like mini arc reactors on his knees, but I can't confirm that. Does anyone in the comments know if that's actually true? Hulkbuster was made to subdue and control the Hulk. It wasn't made to straight kill him, which is actually much harder to do. If Tony wanted to kill Hulk, that would be easier than it would to actually make this armor and like calm him down, bring him back to Bruce Banner. Outside of cars and computers, creating interchangeable parts like this isn't very beneficial because oftentimes the repair is more expensive than just buying a whole new product. And even if you were to update it, technology, hardware, software, and the compatibility between them only gets better with each new generation. And this is why it only applies to cars or computers because in 2022, you can drive a car from 2007 pretty safely because the technology hasn't really updated much. Until Elon Musk came around and said, here's Tesla, cars really hadn't changed. They've been continued to optimize the engine and powertrain and other components, but the only real innovation they've had is just more compatibility with your smartphone. Now imagine if today you're using the iPhone 1 that was released in 2007. Not at all the same thing, right? If that was to break even multiple times along the way, it doesn't make any sense for you to do interchangeable parts and fix the battery or the camera or the whatever went wrong. Just buy a new iPhone because it's gonna be far better. Not only that, you can't even use certain applications with compatibility and software and hardware restrictions. Obviously, Tony Stark doesn't have that issue because he's not mass producing these Iron Man suits. In the real world, something like this is not really viable. As cool as it seems, even for weapons technology, it's, it's lackluster. It doesn't actually get the job done. 